I lose you. 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 Say. I want to hear that testimony. Yes, today mark the beginning of greater glory. I am waiting for I've seen sisters here. I can see the manifestation. But there is a young man. The young man I'm talking about. I will hear your testimony. Lord, I lose him. And I set you free. Victory, 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 victory. All round victory. Whatever they projected in that your stomach, I cancel it, I set you free. The person that shot arrow of death, arrow of death, I command to come out and enter no more in Jesus' name. Oh yeah, leave that individual. Don't enter anybody. Don't enter anybody. Just enter, but don't listen. Arrow of death. Sweet of death. Come out. Come out. I said, don't enter anybody. Enter, but only speed. Enter fire. Enter fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Father, by your authority, I set in motion the burning and the fuel of fire. Holy Ghost fire to go attack the attacker. Attack the attacker. Attack the spirit of death. Attack the now. Fire, thunder, fire, fire, Holy Ghost 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 fire. Anywhere that celebrating your death, in the name of Jesus, I attack that kingdom. Holy Ghost fire. Something is happening there now. Something is you will fulfill your years. You will fulfill your years. Lord, give that person victory. Is there anything too hard for God to do? Sentence of death, I cancel you. Short life, I cancel you. Kahuria, Zeluvi, Kahu Zindenia, Ranjeluvana, Kariski, Tena. Oh Lord, glorify your name. Glorify your name. Every plant my heavenly father did not plant in their life, I command it to be uprooted now. Let that backwardness be uprooted. Let that affliction be uprooted. I cancel that hatred be uprooted. Limitation, limitation, I cancel be uprooted. Every failure at the age of making progress be uprooted. That heart problem be uprooted. That glaucoma be cancelled be uprooted. Oh Lord, the heaviness in the head be cancelled be uprooted in Jesus' name. And I pray for you. Evil personality alter the world. To cast a spell upon your life. And since you had that word, he has clicked in your heart. Now I uproot a returning band to send that. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, give that person thorough deliverance. That after today, 
all that feeling and thought and evil, you will see them no more. Toro, Toro, Toro. I am waiting for somebody there. He see you. The spell of agent or the devil, occult man, he can never walk in you anymore. Come on. All victory. Victory. Sign. Sign. Deliverance. Toro. 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 Somebody here, you had so many miscarriages. It shall not continue any longer. I cancel it. I return the arrow back to sender in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. We are in Zion, in Zion, in Zion. We are in Zion, a victor is all. In Zion, in Zion. You are in Zion, a place of encounter. We are in Zion, a victor is all. In Zion, in Zion. Sing it again. All in Zion, in Zion. Yeah, in Zion, a victor. Again. Today is today. In Zion, in Zion, in Zion, we have victory. It's all. Celebrate your victory in advance. In, celebrate your victory in advance. Again and again and again. Again.
One more time. Amen. Somebody have been looking for employment. Let me remind you, I'm giving you from now to the end of this month. The work you are looking for is being prepared for you. This month will never pass you by. And you will be met. Through that walk, you shall be a blessed person. Say amen to that. I say this month will never pass you by. It is going to be a jubilee. Jubilee gift. I said this month we are into. If we pass this month, it's not this message, it's not this word that I'm speaking now. I said this month, the place he prepared for you, through there, you shall become whatever you want to be in life. Can I hear you say amen to that? Glorify our God is a ruling king. Glorify the glorify daddy is a Lord of all. I said glorify daddy is a Lord of all. Choosing glorify the over. Is a ruling king. Bring the magnify our God. Is a Lord of all. Oh, yeah, sing it now. Sing it, sing it. Mm -hmm. Let us magnify our God. He's a Lord of God. I go the song, go the Holy Ghost, take over. I go the Father, I go the song, go the Holy Ghost, take over. I go the Father, I go the Holy Ghost, take over. I go the Father, I go the Holy Ghost, take over. I go the Holy Ghost, I go the Holy Ghost, I go the Holy Ghost. I'm God 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 the Holy Ghost.
is taking over. Amen. Now, today, the Lord has taken over. And somebody is a blessed, blessed already. I said, somebody, you are blessed already. And you will smile. You will laugh. But don't let the blessing carry you away from the Lord. Because your blessing is from Him. If you follow Him, the blessing will remain. Can I hear you say Amen? As I was preparing to come out, somebody brought the deliverance that God gave somebody while we are praying here on Thursday. And that person might not be here, maybe at home. And the Lord went there, and I think I said something like that on Thursday. The Lord went there and delivered the person complete. And what came out of the person's stomach was ring and cowries and many things that was put inside the person. While we are praying here and we said this thing will go to the house. Some people will deliver there now. Now, if you are here, imagine why somebody carrying rings and cowries and many things in the stomach. Uh, you know, the kind of thing, those things do not enter by you know, physical means. Those who are transferred spiritually. And those who were meant to destroy the life of that person. But I want to tell you, whether those things were done to you physically or spiritually, as you are beholding this place, as you are in this fellowship, your life can never be the same. Whether you believe it or not, it's... it's is immaterial to me because my faith is greater than your doubt and what I said concerning you will surely come to pass so the Lord God whom we serve by the Holy Ghost has taken over and you will go home rejoicing my daddy you are God and not a man Father, I praise you for what you have done already. For what you have done previously in fellowship like this. What you have done this morning is remarkable. And my prayer is that no one that steps into this place shall go back to self. And I pray, I decree, that the expectation of everyone here shall be granted. Oh Lord, I pray he the sick. Amen. Provide for the need of your people. Amen. Fight their battle. Amen. Whatsoever be the arrow of death. By authority, I pull it out and return it back to sender. Amen. Every cause be cancelled. Sorrow be wiped away. That breast lumps be cancelled, be removed in Jesus' name. My daddy, bless me this once. Let him be a blessing to our generations. I pray that wherever they go, let your name be glorified. All that are watching me all over the world, Father, I count them favored people. Let their blessing be made manifest in a short while in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, come and take control. It is time for your people to celebrate Jubilee. Oh Lord, do Jubilee for everyone. That you do Jubilee for me. You made us to understand that Thursday you open a tap. And somebody will swim the ocean of blessings. Oh Lord, count me one of them. And everyone here in Jesus' name. 
I ask as I open my mouth to speak. Father, take over my lips. I pray, minister, to your, the need of your people in Jesus' name. All these ones that are brought in my front, whatever that is taking control, attacking their lives, I discharge them by the Holy Ghost. I set them free. I bind the principalities and powers. I change them. I cast the abyss in Jesus' name. I set them free. I set them free. I set them free. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Can somebody say amen? Shall we get seated? Jubilee, oh. Jubilee, oh. Jubilee, oh. There must be jubilee for Jubilee, oh. Jubilee, oh, Jubilee, oh, there must be Jubilee. Now turn your Bible to Leviticus chapter 25. I read. From verse 17, 25, from verse 17, and you shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord. You are God. Wherefore, you shall do my status and keep my commandments. I mean, and keep my judgment and do them. And you shall dwell in the land in safety. And the land shall yield her fruit. And you shall eat your feet and dwell therein in safety. The autonomy chapter 15 Deuteronomy chapter 15 I read from verse 1 Deuteronomy 15 from verse 1 at the end of every seven years I shall make a release and this is the manner of the lease. Every creditor that lended out unto his neighbor shall release it. And he shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release of a foreigner. Thou mayest exact it again. But that which is thine with thy brother, thy hand shall release. Save when there shall be no poor among you. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. For the Lord thy God blessed thee as he promised thee. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over, over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates, in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not hide in thy heart, nor shut thy hand from thy poor brother, but thou shalt open thy hand, what? Thy hand, but thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his 
need in that which he wanted. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying, The seventh day, the year of release, is at hand, and thy eye be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him not. And he cry unto the Lord against thee, and it shall be, and it be sin unto thee, thou shalt surely give him, and thy heart shall not be grieved. When thou givest unto him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works, and in all that thou puttest thy hand unto. Let's stop there. In Galatians chapter 7. Galatians chapter 7. I mean chapter 6 verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. And I read. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man saw it, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in where doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good. Unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And so from these chapters and verses, I'm bringing to you the theme. The month of Jubilee, part two. The month of Jubilee, part two. In the introductory part, in the introductory part of this message, last Tuesday, we saw what the Lord commanded us to do towards one and another in this period of jubilee so that we can reap his blessings in return and as those that fear God take note as those that fear God and regard his commandments we should do exactly as we have been instructed in order to be blessed. Praise the Lord. So, for us to be fully enjoy all the Lord has ordained for us in this period, we shall consider this message under the flames of headings. One, what we must do to be blessed in this period. Two, the blessings of obeying God and our response. Let's go to point number one. What we must do to be blessed in this period. Take note. God has made it clear to us that this period of jubilee is a time of drawing closer to him in practical holiness and righteousness. A time of doing to others what we want others to do to us. Also, it is a time of releasing others. Those you have not forgiven, forgive them. Those that you have any matter, or those that have been housemate or servant for many years, it's time of releasing them that God might release you also from all bondages and captivities. Now, take note. It's a time of extending gifts to one another, paying and forgiving debts. Somebody is owing you and have no money to pay, forgive that person. If you also are owing people, pay the debts. If you don't have much, pay the little you have. And God might touch that person to cancel the debts instead of avoiding him or her. Pay the much you have. Or if you have nothing, go to him and tell him, I don't have 
when I have, I will give to you. It's time we should pay our debts and those who doesn't have, that we you forgive them. It is time of settling cases, outstanding cases that appear to be hard to be settled. You initiate it and see how that case can be settled. For the Bible says we should follow peace with all men and holiness which without have no eye shall see the Lord. So make peace with them and the Lord will bless you. Are you hearing me? It's time of caring for servants that you have neglected. You must care for them as a child of God and you must start doing it if you are not doing it and do it until Jesus comes. Care for your servants. Care for your mess as if though they are your, your children that you, your biological children. As you care for them, care for your mess and servants like that. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Also, let's take note of widows around us. Care for the widows and care for the orphans and for the motherless and for the fatherless and for the helpless. Those that have nobody to help them, be a help unto them. And the Lord will help you. Are you hearing me? Let's take care of the poor among us. Help them. And for the needy ones among us, try to spot them out. Help them and the Lord will help you. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow anything in the name of the Lord to anybody, you are sowing it to the Lord. The same Lord God whom you sow it to, that, soul will sort you, that God will sort you out. He will bless you in Jesus' name. And so, we need to practice what we hear. Christianity is not in theory, but is in what? In practice. Many people just think that talking to people about we serve and deliver, that way you stop. No, practically demonstrate it. Whoever you can help, help that person. Whoever you can care for, care for that person. Whoever you can forgive, forgive that person. Whoever that comes around you, let them see the good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Are you hearing me? The Bible says you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. It's a let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let there be good works. Did you hear me? Everybody extend hand of world. I'm not hearing you again. Extend the hand of good works to others. Let them see the good work and say God is in you. Let them say that you are a child of God because of what they see. For the Bible says by their fruit you shall know them. Are you hearing me? So let us demonstrate and practice Christian life so that those who speak against you will be ashamed when they see the practical aspect of Christian life. They will know that you are a child of God. Are you hearing me? And God in heaven will be glorified. Do you know that when People are praising God because of you. That God will be glorified. And so, let's do something that is good. And the Lord will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. So, it is time of giving without grudges. For the success of the work of God. And the time of granting freedom to the oppressed and the afflicted. I want to remind you now that crusade is coming. You should be able to know that that crusade, there are some things that must be done. Also give to sponsor the crusade. Not by constraint, but willingly. As a child of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't wait when pastor will say, hey, come out and make pledges. Give us your money. If you be a child of God, and you know that this project requires money, and you have money, why not pledge something? Uh, so that you do it because you're a child of God. You know that this is what to, ought to be done. And once you do it, with that kind of mind, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. So let's sponsor the work. Let us make sure freedom is granted, oppressed and afflicted, and the, the Lord will bless you. If you look at this place in Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25 from verse 1, look at your Bible. Matthew 25. Look at it. Reading from verse 31. And I read, 
and when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and the, the and he shall separate one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from he from the goats from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then shall the king say unto them on his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for I was unhungry and you gave me meat I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me I was sick and you visited me I was in prison and you came unto me and shall the righteous take notes what do they call them the righteous answer him saying Lord when saw we thee and hungry and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee and the king shall answer and said unto him verily I saw unto you inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren you you have done it unto me then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me he cost into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for I was unhungry and you gave me no meat I was thirsty and you gave me no drink I was a stranger and you took me not in naked and you clothed me not sick and in prison and you visited me not then shall they also answer him say Lord when so we thee and a hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee then shall he answer them saying verily I saw unto you inasmuch as you did it not to one of the of the least one of the least of these you did it not to me and this shall go away in the everlasting punishment for the righteous into life eternal now if you look at that place if you search your bible very well you see that this is the only place judgment was delivered in the bible and judgment was delivered on the basis of practical righteousness not on theory those who helped those who gave those who visited those people who did good to others were called the righteous and they were told to go into to enter into everlasting life into eternal life but the other people that refused to help and give they were told to go into everlasting punishment that means as people of God let us practicalize what we are hearing by acting by doing it and then at the end of this life we shall enter into everlasting life in this life the Lord shall be with us and the Lord will bless us mightily in Jesus name so let us begin to give and to help 
and to visit the prisoners and begin to help one another. Help the needy, the poor, the afflicted, oppressed. Let us pray for them, care for them. Let us give to them, give to one another. The Lord will give to us in Jesus' name. Take note. So for us to be blessed this period, God has commanded us to fear him. And do exactly as he has commanded. So that in return, he will bless us by releasing us from all our captivities in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 6. I read verse 31. Luke chapter 6. Read verse 31. Look at your Bible. Luke chapter 6. And from verse 31. And as you would that men should do to you. Do you also to them likewise? For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good for you, do good to you, what thanks have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. For love your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And you shall be the children of the highest, for his kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. Judge, look at verse 37. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down and checking together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure you made with all, it shall be measured to you again. So, as we give to others, God will give to us. Others will give to us. The way we give, so also we shall receive. If you give with a kind of giving with a little measure. You give people little. You receive little. But when you give without measure, you will receive also bountifully. The Lord will give you bountifully. And so, whatever we are giving to people, let us also think the way we give, the kind of thing we give. Give it with a good heart and give it without measure. Give to the glory of God, the satisfaction of the person, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. So let us learn to do what? To give. Let us practice what we are hearing. And God will never forsake you. God will never abandon you. If you look at Psalm 41, verse 1, Psalm chapter 41, I read verse 1. Look at your Bible. Psalm 41. I read verse 1. And it says, Psalm chapter 41, verse 1. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Think about it. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemy. Think about this. The Lord will preserve such people. The Lord will deliver them from the hands of their enemies. Those people, the Lord will help them to, to fulfill their years. They shall never be cut short. Let us take note 
of what you are hearing and what you are you know, hearing this day. I want you to make sure you practice so that you can enjoy this uh, uh, blessing that accompany those who do something that is right, who obey the totality of the will of God and help the poor and help the needy and help the people. If you look at verse 3, it says, uh, verse 3, I read, but let's read from verse 2 again. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of Langishan. Thou will make all his bed in his sicknesses. You see, when you are sick, the Lord will heal you. But he said, I am the Lord that healed thee. If you are doing good things to others, if you are sick, God will heal you. He will not allow you to die in that sickness. He will keep you from the enemies which are the plan. He will protect you from all evil. Praise the Lord. So let us learn to do good. So that others will do good to you. The Lord will do good to you. And you shall be blessed in Jesus' name. You know the case of Dokaias, who was giving to people, making coats for the widows. And Look at what the Bible says concerning her in Acts chapter 9 from verse 36. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. And I read Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple, a certain disciple named Tabitha which by interpretation is called Docaius. This woman was full of good works and arms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Who when they had washed, they led her in an upper chamber. And for as much as leader was nigh to Joppa, and the disciple had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to him, to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the goods and garments which the cast met while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth. And turning to him, turning him, I mean, and turning him to the body and said, Tabitha, arise. I was the woman that was dead. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave his, her his hands and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. This woman was giving arms, helping the widows, making coats for them. But one day she became sick and died. And the widows watched her and kept her and said, this woman don't need to die because of what is doing for them. And they were looking for what remedy and they sought for Peter, an apostle, and invited him and told him, Peter all that this woman had been doing. But now he's dead. And Peter said, okay, all of which we went outside and went in and called her Tabitha, the curse, come back to life. And she came back to life. Someone that was dead. Someone was ready to be buried. But because of her deeds, her good works, she was brought back to life and she was handed over to the widows to continue to do good to them. You see how God pre preserves a righteous person. You see how God preserves somebody doing good so that you continue your good works. And I'm assuring you, if you will go on to do good things like Docaius, you will never die a day before you are dead. The Lord will preserve you to continue to do good in Jesus' name. 
let us go and do good works like the Caius. Remember Colonus. His arm did reach to heaven to the point that God saw it and sent Peter. So they will go and preach to them. And it's also that all can be saved. As we can see in, in Acts chapter 10 verse 1 to 4. I'm not reading. So let us do good and God will bless you. Are you hearing me? I say God will bless you. If you do good to others, sometimes you might be doing it to the angel. You might not know that person you are dealing with is who? An angel. So do good to all. And God sometimes will send an angel. Just as it happened to Lot. Praise the Lord. In the book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 1 to 10. I'm not reading. I want to let you know. He has to make, you know, dress a calf and kill it and give them food. And they asked the question. And, uh, you know, they told him, God will destroy this place. But before then, you and your family come out. Praise the Lord. So, let's do good. So, as we obey him and keep to the both instructions, the covenant keeping God will surely turn all our captivities and command his blessings upon our lives in Jesus' name. So let's go and do as we have been taught. Because there is blessings in doing the will of God, in doing the commandment of God. When you do it, when you keep to it, the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. That takes to point number two. The blessings of being, of obeying God. And take note. The blessings of obeying God. We're going to see this as we go through this second subheadings. Those who obeyed God in time past were tremendously blessed. For example, Abraham was blessed with the child Isaac in his old age because Abraham obeyed God. Because of his obedience to God, God blessed him in all things. He blessed him with riches and abundance. He blessed him with all things. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Let's see. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. And I read. Genesis chapter 12. Open your Bible and read. If you will obey God like Abraham. This same God. A blessed Abraham will bless you. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Now, the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and cause them that cause thee. And in thee shall all families of earth be blessed. Look at verse 4. So Abraham departed. You see, without any hesitation or delay, Abraham departed to obey God in obedience to the commandment and get out of a kindred, your father has a country, to a place I will show you. Abraham obeyed without asking, where am I going? And then what about all that living behind? What happens to them? Abraham departed. And as he departed to obey God, I want to let you know, God blessed him. All the promises came to pass. In Genesis 21 verse 1, Genesis chapter 21 verse 1, and I read Genesis 21 and verse 1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had Spoken for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son 
in his old age. At the same time of which God has spoken to him and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Now look at us. Verse 6. And please, before we go to verse 6, let's try to get the holy function from verse 5. Verse 4 and 5. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old. And God, I mean, as God commanded him, and Abraham was an hundred years old. When his son Isaac was born to him, hundred years of age, verse six, and Sarah said, "God has made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me." And she said, "Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck, for I born him a son in his old age?" The point is. The promises was fulfilled. God gave him Isaac. Even when the age had become too old, God fulfilled his promise because Abraham obeyed God. If you will obey God, God will bless you. The promises of God shall be fulfilled in your life. Now, if you look at chapter 24, verse 1, as a matter of obedience and the results, Chapter 24, verse 1. Let's see. And Abraham was old and was stricken in age. Genesis 24, verse 1. And Abraham was old and was stricken in age. And the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. How many things? In all things. From A to Z. God has blessed Abraham in all things. So, because he obeyed God. Because he kept to the commandment of God. God bless him in all things from A to Z. Minus nothing. Everything that he needed in life. God blessed him with them. In all blessing with them. In all things. And all those who cared for others in the Bible. Were rewarded with eternal life. As I've seen in Matthew 25, verse 41, they were rewarded with eternal life, in the everlasting life, because they care for others. Heaven at last was their portion. So our Lord Jesus Christ obeyed God and gave his life for the salvation of man. And he was highly exalted above every other name. Because of the obedience. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Look at your Bible. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 5. And it reads. Chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God. Thought it not robbery. To be equal with God, but made himself of no repetition and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also had highly exalted him. And giving him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth. Because of the obedience that Abraham had to God. And God blessed him. And because of obedience of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. God also gave him, a, gave him a name which is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, of things on earth, and things beneath the earth. The point is, he was exalted as a matter of what? Obedience. 
And if we follow the line today by obeying God, doing the will of God practically, God who exalted Abraham exalted Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That same God will exalt you. I say that same God will exalt you in all things. He will bless you in all things in Jesus' name. Brethren, as we obey God and keep his commandment by ensuring that we keep, we do what we have been taught by causing others to rejoice in this period of jubilee and by keeping to all the instructions above, he will surely bless us in Jesus' name. I don't know what you are looking for. Obey the Lord. The Lord will bless you. Keep to this instruction. The totality of it. Do the will of God. You shall prosper. Everything we are looking for. is not by struggle. It is a matter of obeying God. God will give it to you. Without struggle. Don't forget. Seek it first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. What happened? I didn't hear you very well. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What happened? All these things, all these things, these things you are looking for, they are nothing before God. He's the omnipotent God. All these things shall be added unto you. I don't know what you came looking for. Obey the Lord. Do the will of God. You shall prosper. Obey the Lord. Keep the totality of this instruction. Go and practice what you are hearing. I'm assuring you, God will bless you in all things. All these things shall be added unto you. So, stop. There are many people that are thinking that to get the blessing of God, you have to struggle and struggle and do this. And sometimes for them, you know, when they come say, pray, Master, Pastor, pray, Pastor, pray. And they don't obey the word of God. The only specialist in pastor do what? Pray. That's what I'm interested. That is not how God blesses people. If one God to bless you, obey his word. He will do what? He will bless you. But if you are coming here and say, what are coming today? I've come to receive a pastor. Pray for me now. I'll be, I'll be blessed. Now, with which qualification? What will it make you to receive those things? If you don't obey God, you can't receive them. But if you obey God and do his will, God will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. As you have, you have heard me today of how you should care and help and visit and give to others and sponsor the work of God. You say, well, that is for them. And then when prayer time comes, he said, Amen. You are wasting your time. Praise the Lord. Obedience brings what? Give. He that giveth sparingly shall receive sparingly. And he that giveth bountifully shall receive what? Bountifully. What about a stingy person who doesn't give? You get nothing in return. The one you have will be taken from you and given to those who give. So let's do the will of God and prosper. Let's obey the Lord in all things and we shall be blessed in all things. Let nobody tell me I, 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 I came to service and I didn't get anything. My friend, you didn't obey the word of God. Is a law. If you obey it, that law shall be fulfilled. Are you hearing me? So, if you don't obey the word of God, you get nothing. Look at Deuteronomy. Let's read. 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. Open your Bible. 28. And reading from verse 1. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high 
above all nations of the earth. If you will keep this commandment and do all of them, the Lord will set you on high above all nations. If you see somebody among you there now, blessed above you, my friend, it's because of what? That person is keeping to the will of God. If you obey God, God will bless you because God cannot lie. Can God lie? Does he have power to bless? Does he have resources? So, if we are preaching and you are sleeping, and you are thinking of how time is getting to where uh, the time is going, and you are thinking about your uh, business, and thinking about, uh, you know, uh, your mind is somewhere, and then at the end, let us pray. Say, oh, God, pray, I'm going to bless. You will be blessed with nothing. But if you have obeyed and listened to this teaching, I said, I will practice. Oh Lord, give me grace. And go on to practice them. My friend, even before that, God will bless you because you know your mind is set to practice what you have heard. Are you hearing me? What you have been taught, your mind is set to do what? Practicing that. So God will do what? Bless you. Praise the Lord. Now, look at that pressure reading in verse 2. Verse 2. Remember? We bless above all nations of the earth. Verse 2. And all this blessing shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. How many blessings? From A to Z. Now, look at what happened there. All this blessing, hmm? even if you are running, even if you decide to run from blessing, eh? This blessing will pursue you and do what? Oh, that is as simple as it. Even if you say, I don't need this blessing again. Eh? Ha. Blessing will say, You are joking. God has set it in motion. He will pursue you. And you have obeyed it. You have, you know, done something. You have set your mind in doing all the totality of the will of God. And you say, I don't want blessing. Let me tell somebody, somebody do something. Praise the Lord. Do you know a man in the Bible called Solomon? Who knows about the man? A man called Solomon. He gave a thousand bond offering. And then the Lord received it. But he never asked God anything. He gave a thousand bond offering. You know why he did not ask God anything? The father ruled Israel 40 years. And the father had a lot of riches and left it for him. So what is he doing with a blessing of material thing? He got too much. So when he gave a thousand bond offering, he just went to sleep. And then God appeared to Solomon by night and said, Solomon, ask me what I will give to you. You are thinking you have too much. Your father give you too much. Solomon, do all. Ask me. What do you have? What do you think you have is nothing. Ask me what I'll give to you. And Solomon looked at God and I said, Okay, just give me wisdom, understanding to look at me. <laughs> God laughed. This man is thinking that he has something. He said, That already I give it to you. And I give you riches and honor that no king like you shall be like. You think you have riches? Now I give you riches. Because of what? He gave, if you look at, if you go and read 1st Kings chapter 3, verse 1 to 8 or 12 to 14, you see that he asked, he offered a thousand bond offering and went his way to sleep. Somebody would have offered, said, God bless me. He is not interested because he was mighty rich. And then he slept. God woke him in the dream. So, no more. Ask me what I will give to thee. And he said, uh, what can I ask now? You are giving me the Holy Spirit as a king after my father. Oh yeah? Just give me wisdom, understanding to take care of them. Because them already granted, but I'm giving you riches and honor. Praise the Lord. So he see you. When you meet the requirement of God in obeying him, even if you decide, as I'm preaching, I said, I'm going. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not interested about it. But this blessing, blessing will, blessing will pursue you, even if you enter motor or aircraft. 
that is small, that one cannot run past God. God on the breeze. No, over, I take the aircraft and bless you there. Praise the Lord. So today, as many of you who will obey this instruction and go to do it, wherever you go, blessing will wake you up. Blessing will overtake you. Blessings will follow you. Everywhere, every place. He said, all this blessing shall come on thee and do what? I didn't hear you. You know, sometimes people will be counting blessings of men of God and blessings of children of God. Thank God for them. I'm happy they're not counting blessings of unbelievers sometimes. Now, listen to me. Of course, unbelievers are thieves, so why are you counting their blessings? I don't know where I've learned from them. Anybody that is unbeliever, the rich, is what? He's a thief. He's a robber. So they, don't, they only say that this child of God is riding jet, is having money. That's because he's a child of God. So but don't believe they don't, they don't bother. They can have three laws. And they know that they are thieves. So they don't say, hey, this man is a, uh, well, this and that. And they, they don't even make any news out of it. What's the thief? Praise the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way. Hmm? The truth and the life. He said, no man call it for the father, to the father but by me. And he said, I am the door. If any man enter, he will find pastor. And he said, all oh, that ever came through all that way are thieves and what? So if you are rich, you do not come through Jesus. You are what? A thief and what? That's what the Bible said. So if you are here and I say, ah, my brother is a uh, trillionaire. But he's not born again. He's a thief and a robber. Because it's not through who? Through the door. He climbed through the window and collected the riches that belong to the children of God. The Bible says the age is of the Lord and the fullness what? Thereof. Therefore, whatever you see in the earth here belongs to God. So if you, anybody is a thief collecting them without through Jesus Christ, is what? If we didn't catch the person here, he deceive us. We didn't, no, nobody catch him, you know, and then judge him and send him to prison. When he close eye, he will know that he's a real what? You don't understand. These people, you don't, the way you are looking at me, when he close eye, will he, will he, will he, will he escape God's judgment? No. Oh, so you can see the world is truth now. The thief and what? He see you. Your case is different. You are not a thief. Because you are going through who? I didn't hear you again. Even if you are a thief before and robber, and you repent today, God will forgive you. But don't thief again, no. Don't go into robbery again. Do you hear what I'm saying? As that one will bring judgment. So, if you obey the Lord, God will bless you spiritually, physically, materially, financially, academically. In fact, your name shall be a blessing. Amen. Wherever you go, you will magnet blessings. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. Now, do you want to know all these blessings? Let me read some of them to you. In Deuteronomy 28, please. As I read, just look at them very well. Don't mind the way the eyes, the light is stopping here. Praise the Lord. Chapter 28, verse, verse 3. Blessed shall that be in the city. Anywhere you are, blessing will follow you. And blessed shall that be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. And the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemy that rise against thee to be smitten before thy first. They shall come out against thee one way 
and flee before these seven ways. The Lord shall scatter your enemies. Say amen to that. As a matter of blessings. Now look at verse 8. And he said, The Lord shall command, oh my God, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Imagine when God command blessing to follow you. Ha! You will not see that blessing can run speed. You don't know that blessings fear God. Everything God created to fear him. If God command bless you, follow this woman, eh? My friend, even if they put in an aircraft, it will overtake the aircraft. It's the commandment of God. You follow you in and out, everywhere you go. Anything that is good will follow you. Anything blessed will follow you. Because a commandment are begin by who? Almighty God, whom the Bible says, unto him, every knee shall bow. And the Bible says, all power belongs to him in heaven and on earth. And the whatever that is existing today is existing by the power of the most high God. So blessing exists by his power. If he give a blessing, commandment to follow you, blessing will overpass you and follow your generation. It will be too much on you. And follow your children, 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 children. I really hear you very well. It's like you don't need blessing. The way your face look like. Like your blessing needed the only suffering. I cancel it in Jesus' name. You see you, blessing will follow you. Whether you like it or not, and you will meet this requirement today, and begin to help others, encourage others, give to others, to see the prisoners and preach the gospel, and my friend, you see you, blessing will pursue, in fact, if you are going to enter a bus, blessing will already overtake that bus. Because of you, that boss will not have accident. Because blessings is there. Somebody will bless his word is there. Blessing of promote protection. Everywhere you go, what happens? I didn't hear you again. Okay, if you don't like it, say back to sender. Return it back to me. Say yeah, that blessing follow you. But when you follow me, don't envy me. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. If you say blessing back to send, I will say I receive you in Jesus' name. And then when you see the blessing all around me, don't envy me. You are the one that sent it back to me. Are you hearing me? So you want me to do like you? No. I know the benefit of blessing, so I will do what? Grab it. But when I send it to you, you say back to sender he see you today blessing will overtake you blessing will follow you say back to sender say back to sender you grip it he see you beginning from this month you will celebrate. Because listen to me, whenever a word is made light, is spoken, it begins to have life and begin to walk. From this month, blessing will follow you. People will give you gifts. Miracle and light will just read here your, in your phone. Ka, 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 ka. When you open it, you look at the person by your side. When I see it, you close it. You it. <laughs> if you have been discussing with it, you change the topic because something you can see some sign is some of you, it will be a lot of employment. Some of you promotion. Some of you a lot of husband or wife. Some of you favor. Somebody that forgotten you for years will remember you. Those 
that you did good to them and are paying you with evil after this message they will remember you I know what the Lord can do praise the Lord let me read a little that place so we can move on because I can see that you are understanding what I am saying now before you are sleeping somehow your mind may be somewhere until I say I will take the blessing you begin to you, because he, 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 many of you love challenge you want to you want to struggle with me that's why you woke up by force praise the Lord now look at that place we are reading chapter 28 28 and I read from verse 9 verse 9 the Lord shall establish thee and the holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods in the fruit of thy body in the fruit of thy cattle in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain in thy land in his season, and to bless all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make it the head and not the tail. Think about it. The head and not the tail. And thou shalt not be beneath. He said, And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I commanded this day, to observe and to do them. If we keep to this commandment, to this instruction, and to do to others what they want God to do to you, God will bless you. I am very, very sure. From today, God will begin to bless you. Remember, he has commanded us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto us. So, let's keep on. If you are not born again, something must be done. If right now, you have not accepted Jesus, as a Lord, as a personal Savior. Of course, if you are not born again, your righteousness is not accepted. Even if you don't do anything evil. All your righteousness is not acceptable. Praise the Lord. Our righteousness is accepted only in who? In Christ Jesus. Therefore, what we need to do now is Repent of your sins. Confess them. And promise God no more. Believe that Jesus died for you. Shed his precious blood for you. And was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for your justification. Believe it. Now, what you have to do is reject the devil, renounce all his words. Invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart. To be a Lord, their personal Savior. Ask the counsel your name in the book of death and write your name in the book of life and give you grace to live the Christian life. And as that happened today, we shall be asked, you shall be called and answer a child of God. And your righteousness shall be accepted. Can I hear you say amen? amen. You should know if you be a Christian. A Christian is not a sinner and a sinner is not a Christian. The Bible says so in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8 and it says and I read He that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, 
I might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For he still made it in, in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So verse 8 says, A sinner is not a Christian. Verse 9 says, A Christian is not a sinner. Now, if you look at verse, maybe you are say, What is sin? Then look at the answer in First John chapter 5. Verse 17, F. It says, All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. Unbelief is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Selfishness is sin. Anger is what? Sin. Lying is is sin. Pride is sin. Hatred, envy, contention, strife, keeping mind of the promise God no more. The Lord will show you mercy. Are you into talkativeness? Are you into complaining? Are you into murmuring? Are you into cursing people and swearing with heaven and earth? Watch me, I do. Make me, I do. Have me, I do in your heart. All of them is sin. You should maintain a heart of purity. You should maintain a sanctified life. If you are born again, you should pray for sanctification. Amen. You are ways. I don't know the evil you are into. Now listen to me. All these people. That worship idol, make idol, that is sin. This is like, you know, go to consult marine spirits and go to consult the dead or native doctors. That's sin. Those that go for divination don't go there anymore. Or pang reading. Amen, you are ways. Promise God no more. I don't know the evil you are into. You see all these people. Listen to me. All the people that, what they do? They are into secret court, open court, marine court, witchcraft court. They put rings and they, you know, they read um, um, seven book of Moses. All those people repent and say, Lord, no more. Gather those material and burn them. Now, listen to me. Whether it's village court or international court or campus court, don't join them. Renounce them. Promise God no more. Amen. Your ways. Are you into stealing? Are you picking pockets? Are you stealing from your mother, from your father, from your husband, from your wife? Are you among those who steal it from where you are working? From your mother? From your, you know, from your girl? I mean, you are ways. Or maybe you are into a burglary, breaking home of people, packing their load. That's wickedness. Or maybe you are into armed robbery. You go with gun. You show them a gun. And then you hit them. And you snatch their car, their money. You're a wicked person. And the judgment of God is upon you. Except to repent. I don't know the evil you are into. I mean, you are with. Are you into fraud or gambling? Are you duping white people, black people, or government? Are you a dupes? Are you a dupe? Repent and say, Lord, I am sorry. I'll do it no more. And please don't give us any money you brought here. That is a money you are stolen from people. We don't need your money. Amen. You are ways. Return the money back to the owner. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Such your life. Are you into masturbation? That's wickedness. That's terrible sin. Are you into fornication? Are you into adultery? Are you among those people that are into homosexual or lesbianism? 
This is a gross wickedness against God, against humanity. Confess and repent and promise God no more. I don't know the evil you are into. Maybe you are into prostitution, private prostitution, public prostitution. You are those living in the hotel. Or those that are selling your body in your house. Or in the school. Or you are those that are patronizing, they are going to visit them. Repent and say, Lord, I am sorry. I will do it no more. Or maybe you are into abortion. You kill unborn baby, you ate the abortion, you, you said the drug, and you help them, the doctor that bought the baby. No mother has inheritance in the kingdom of God. Repent and promise God no more. Are you into hired assassin? Are you a ritual killing, killer? Are you among those people that are kidnapping and killing? These are gross wickedness against God, against humanity. Repent and promise God no more. Don't give us your money. Don't give us offering. We don't need it. Amen. You are ways. Are you into fighting and quarreling? Are you among those people that are involved in giving bribe, extorting money from people while you join the where you are working is to extort money? That's wickedness. Repent and promise God no more. I mean, you are wait. You see all these people listening to me that are working for people. They don't do the work and they collect salary. That is stealing. Or you don't pay those working for you. You're a thief. Repent to them and pay them and God will bless you. Are you among those people that what you do, you are disobedient to your parents? Of their boss, of their husband, repent and promise God no more. Or you beat your wife, who's tied to your wife, repent and promise God no more. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Is it these people that you know what they do? They go into smuggling. That is sin. Are you among them? Or you take snuff? You smoke cigarette? Or you take Indian hemp? Or cocaine? Or heroin? Or you are selling it or buying it for people? That is sin. Repent and promise God no more. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Are you taking alcoholic drinks? Uh, white bimbo, brokutu, beer, hot drinks, 1% or half percent? Repent and say no more. I will not sell it. I will not buy it. I will not drink it. I will never touch it. And if you are walking there or selling it, you close that place. You resign. I saw one man here, I think it's maybe around. When we went to Crusade in one of the country, he was a beer distributor. And he said them in trailers. He was a big man in he was, he was a dealer. But when he had my word, the message was preached, he closed that. He dropped that evil. I saw him a few days ago, some few weeks ago here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, if a man can close that kind of business, is it stopping to drink? I mean, you to stop to drink, is it a big thing? For you to stop taking it, is it a big thing? A man close a distributor in trailers. When he had a word of God, he closed it down. I mean, you are ways. Tomorrow may be too late. As I round up now, search your life. I want to remind you something. Marriage is between a man and a woman until the dead do your part. And marriage is for better and for worse. Don't say I am only expecting good things in marriage. Whatever you see in marriage, you take it. What will help you is pray to God. Don't say, I send away my wife. Don't say, eh, I run away from my husband. It is until the day. Do your part. 
Now, if your second wife that's wrong, you have made a mistake in life. If your third wife, oh, that's evil. Or fourth, or fifth, or sixth, or seventh, pack your load after hearing me. Leave that place. That man is not your husband. And if a man that married them two, three, four, five, six, seven, or he married only two, remove the second one. And if up to seven, I, I, there was a, a man here who gave us testimony. He married seven. And the fortunate thing is that seven of them are not his, his wife. Because the first wife had been removed before he married seven. So he has to remove the seven of them. And imagine how many children that are involved. I said, this man, I'm talking about married seven wives. But he had signed the first wife long time ago. Until he had me, I removed seven of them. I mean, you are ways. Tomorrow may be too late. I don't know the evil you are into. In Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Let's see. Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. I read verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? How many? How many created male? Not a man with two wives. Not a man with three wives. A man and a female. That's verse 4. Now, verse 5. Let's move to verse 5. And said, so for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and that which shall be one flesh. Wherefore, now look at that place. One flesh. That which shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twin, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. A man and a woman until the death do your part. And if God has joined them together, don't go and separate them. It is until the death separate them. Praise the Lord. And if death has not separated you, and you send away your wife, go and bring her back. And then I know separate I run away from, you run away from your husband, return back to your first husband. That is your husband. Until they do your part. Now, listen to me. See all these women and some men that paint their hands and paint their legs and paint their mouth, paint their eyes and paint their nose, paint their hair, paint their body. That is abomination. Are you hearing me? Those of them that put extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, uh, attachment, weave on, palming, earrings, and bangle, and jewelry, you don't need them. And young men that put cross, and chain, and rings, you don't need them. Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't need anything like that. Some young men that do Jericho, rough hair, scatter hair, and play hair like a woman, that is a sign of somebody who is spoiled. You don't need it. Those that dress expose their chest, their armpit, their tummy, expose their nakedness to seduce. You don't need it. Cover your body properly. Well. A Christian is not a seducer. A seducer is not a Christian. Amend your ways. Now is the acceptable time. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, the Bible says, When they are spoiled, what shall they do? So they go after painting, after ornaments. Whenever a man, a woman has spoiled, young lady, they will begin to do what? Make up. You don't need it. And if a woman wearing trousers, dressing like a man, is an abomination. And if a man wearing skirt and blouse, that's, weak, that's confusion. It's an abomination. And the commandment is that it shouldn't be. In Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. I read Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. Not to the man put on woman's garment. For all that do so 
an abomination unto the Lord thy God. All those women that are wearing trousers are what? Men wearing skirt and blouses are what? Abominable people. An abominable thing cannot enter heaven. Revelation 21 verse 8. Revelation 21 verse 8. I read 21 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 21 reading verse 8 and it reads from verse 8 but the fearful and unbelief and abominable take a look abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their parts in the lake which born with fire and brimstone which is the second death they were cast into where abominable people shall be cast into hell fire I pray it shall never be your portion repent and escape for hell fire is not prepared for man it was prepared for the devil and his angels now but if you refuse to keep the righteousness and then disobey God you will be cast into hell fire I pray that you will never make such mistake praise the Lord remember why I'm mentioning these things? Somebody may be asking, why are you mentioning all these things? Not everybody knows what is saying. Some prostitute came here some years ago. And uh, when they had me, they said, they don't know that prostitution is sin. Let me ask you a question. Is prostitution sin? I'm not hearing you again. Is prostitution sin? But these prostitutes said they don't know. that the church that going, nobody told them that it's sin. So when they had it, they began to tremble. And they repented and packed the load out of hotel. Now, listen to me. That's why I am mentioning this thing because not everybody knows what is sin. It is when you know that this, what you are doing is evil, you can say, I am sorry. I will do it no more. The Bible said in Proverbs 28 verse 13, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. Do you want to have mercy? Then what you are doing that is evil, confess them, forsake them, promise God, I will do them no more. God will show you what? Mercy. And you know the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sin. So a blood must be shed for sin to be what? Remitted. And in the Old Testament, God told the Israelites that they keep a lamp without any blemish and take the blood and sprinkle it upon the doorposts. That when I will pass over, I will see when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now, the sin, the sin, the cover, the, I mean the committed in time past. When God looked at the blood of animal on the doorpost. He will not kill them. He will know that this is house of a child of God, the Israelite. That was a symbol of what will happen in the New Testament. Because the blood of animal covers sin. But that's not enough to, to work with God, to live with God. Your sin must be what? Remitted. So God used the blood of animal to show them as a symbol. But the real blood that God is looking for is the blood of Jesus Christ, which is coming in the New Testament. Look at the Bible in John chapter 1. Let's see. John chapter 1 and verse 29. Please open your Bible. Let's read. Chapter 1, verse 29. And I read. The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God. John called him what? Which take it away the sin of the world. Not covering the sin of the world. This is the lamp by whose blood the sins of the world shall be what? Washed away. John saw it and said, Behold the lamp of God that take it away the sins of the world. And now, if you look at John chapter 3, verse 16, he said, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth he should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
And in John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood at the cross of Calvary, he said, It is finished. That's the end of all sacrifice for sin. He said, It is all over. And then he said, In John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way. He didn't say, I am aware. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. Only through him we can have what? Access to God. Through his blood, I, our sins shall be washed away. We can, we can stand clean before God. And he said in John chapter 10, verse 10b, I come that they might have life. I have it what? More abundantly. In John chapter 8, verse 30, he said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, what happened? You shall be free indeed. And in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Jesus did not say, Come to us, say, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden with law, with all the tax that the people struggling. He said, Come to me. There's no need for struggling to be free. There's no need for struggling to, you know, to keep to this uh, way of struggle to go to meet God. He said, I come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you want to be saved? Come to the Father through who? Salvation shall be yours. I want to show you in John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. It says, and I read. John's gospel chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them, I believe on his name. As many as receive who? What power do they receive? Power of sonship. If you don't receive Jesus, you have not that power and you are not of his. Receive Jesus, you receive what? Power of sonship. You can be now called a son of God, a child of God. Through who? I'm not hearing you again. Through who? Now, no wonder the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, it said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So, if you want to go to heaven, it is true. Who? I didn't hear you again. And it is by grace, it's not by struggle. Are you hearing me? Apostle Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what? And he see you today. As you receive Jesus as your Lord as a personal Savior, you will live in newness of life. The grace for righteousness, to please God, to do the will of God, that grace shall be released upon you. And you can do all things through who? Jesus Christ. By the grace of God, he see you today salvation shall be yours freedom shall be yours you will go home today as a child of God remember in Romans chapter 10 verse 13 it said whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved rise up and let us pray call upon me repentance salvation shall be yours open your mouth and pray repent of your sins confess them promise God no more Everybody pray. Everybody. I'm sorry, O oh Lord. I'm not even I'll do it no more. Forgive me. I repent in dust and ashes. O oh Lord, show me mercy. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Everybody, everybody, everybody. O oh Lord, have mercy upon me. Save me, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, save me. O oh Lord, show me mercy. Forgive me. Transform my life. I repent of all unrighteous thoughts, or words, or action, or disposition, all unfaithfulness, all pride and selfishness and anger, arrogance. Father, I repent. I renounce them. All the smoking and drunkenness and fighting and quarreling. Confess them. I'm sorry, O oh Lord. Everybody pray. No more courtesy, no more wickedness, no more godliness, no more righteousness. Father, forgive me, save me, cleanse me. Everybody pray. Everybody, no more robbery, no more stealing, no more no masturbation, no more evil. Everybody pray. No more wickedness of all kind, 
show me mercy, show me mercy. Everybody pray. Everybody. I am sorry, O oh Lord. I am sorry, O oh Lord. Save me, sanctify me. O oh Lord, grant me salvation, restoration. I pray, transform, make me every withhold. Everybody pray. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh, Lord. I want more time. Sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry. Oh, Lord. I is close and head bow. The person that is into masturbation and you want to repent, raise your hand up and break in the yoke. You will not do that evil anymore. God bless you today. I'm still waiting for somebody. I've seen several hands up. I'm waiting for somebody. Quickly. The person I'm talking about, don't waste time. God bless you. I still remain one person. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Um, now, that person smoking and drinking, taking Indian him and drug. Can you keep your hands up quickly? I want to break that yoke for you. Quickly. So you can live a decent and righteous life. God bless you there. God bless you. I'm still waiting for somebody. I'm seeing somebody. I'm waiting for somebody. You, your man, do quickly like wait. God bless you there. God bless you. That person into stealing, into robbery. Can you keep your hands up and break in the yoke now? Quickly. Quickly. Tell the Lord, I'm sorry. That person involved into homosexual. Keep your hands up. Tell the Lord, I'm sorry. God bless you there. Uh, no more robbery, no more stealing. Keep your hands up, eyes closed, and head bowed. That person that is into a court disease, keep your hands up. You patronizing native doctor, join to keep your hands up. The person into a court disease, quick killing. Don't waste time. Remember, you are face to face with the spirit of the living God. And if you refuse to repent, you'll be judged. And you don't know what happened the next. Keep your hands up quickly. Repent and drop your mission. And the Lord will deliver you. Keep your hands up quickly. Yes, God bless you there. Yes, God bless you there. Quickly. Yes, God bless you there. Today is a day for you. And you must be delivered. Keep your two hands up now. I want to pray for you. All of you that convicted the person living in adultery and one also into fornication, one drunk, you know, taking like holy drink, keep your hands. Everybody that ready to give your life to Jesus, keep your hands up. I'm praying for you. Say this one after me. Almighty God, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me. And he was buried. And on the third day, he rose against my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus. Wash my sins away from my heart. From today, I reject the devil. I renounce all the evil. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name I pray.
Keep your two hands up. Sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, to Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender. Sing it again. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, to Jesus. Let's say. Just one more time. Two hands up very well. That person planning to do evil, if you try it after hearing me, you will know that I'm serving the living God. Keep your hands up. I'm also praying for that person, also thinking how you can kill yourself. There's no point of that. God has a better plan for you. If you want to bless you, don't kill yourself. If you kill yourself, you go to hellfire, straight. So don't ever think that anymore. God has a better plan for you. Keep your hands up and pray for you. That person that is, you know, you are into fraud where you are walking. Don't do that anymore. I'm praying for all of you. I follow the God that I serve. The God who never disappointed me. The merciful Father, the compassionate God. It is never your will that any such shall perish. That I come in the name of Jesus. Whatever these ones may have done, known and unknown to them, Father, in your wrath, remember mercy. For mercy rejoices over judgment. Whatever judgment they are going through, by mercy let it be cancelled. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil. By authority, I break that yoke. Let the yoke of wickedness be broken in Jesus' name. From this hour, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus. Father, cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus. I pray for this person that was leading. Oh Lord, restore this person back to faith. Restore this soul. The grace, the appetite for righteousness, for prayer, for evangelism be restored. Father, intervene in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus. All of you that are having evil thought, immoral thought, and wicked thought. Father, I pray, circumcise that heart. Sanctify that heart. Make them pure by the Holy Ghost. Power in Jesus' name. Give them a heart free of unclean thought. A heart of purity. Father, intervene in Jesus' name. Can I hear you shout, Amen? Shout it again. 
and it is a man in heaven. 